Good morning, everyone. My name is Linika Berry Jacob, and I'm the founder of an NGO called the Kala Chopal Trust. I was born in a very small town in Bulansher in Uttar Pradesh, and I grew up in a very multicultural background. My mother was an agrarian jat, one step out, one generation out of the you know uh, farm, and. Uh, but extremely educated because they mostly went to the armed forces from there. And uh, my father came from an old Zamidari family. So I was, I, I was brought up in these two different cultures. It was idyllic. The environment was idyllic. We had mango orchards. The farmlands were green. Uh, the small town boasted of extremely talented craftsmen. There was iron smithy. There was woodwork. There was zardozi. And a lot of the minority classes were occupied in this uh, activity, and it was an interdependent environment. You know, people in terms of food, clothing, building, and daily needs were prevalent and easily available. Over the years, we watched this cityscape change. It was unsustainable urbanization that had taken roots. The next generation was mostly migrating out of the city to metros for newer opportunities. The farmlands were disappearing and ad hoc building constructions were taking place. The rivers got polluted. The groundwater was depleted. There were far more vehicles on the road, uh, so the air pollution was bad. And you know, over a hundred years of uni cropping was causing groundwater depletion. And the chemical fertilizer usage, as you know, has become extremely prevalent in agriculture, so we no longer get clean food on the table. Climate change and its cascading impacts are being increasingly recognized as a major challenge across the globe. India slowly is becoming a major greenhouse gas emitter and one of the most vulnerable countries in the world for projected climate change. So when I talk about India, I also talk about the hydrological mapping. So we don't understand the invisible water that is in the ground, what, you know, which is the hydrological mapping is referred to as biomes. And it's a large community of vegetation and wildlife. It's adapted to a specific climate. India has 11 biomes. And 14 to 18 percent of India is said to experience major biome shifts from dry to wet in certain areas and vice versa in the others, with the dry and xeric habitats being under a high risk of change. And we can see that. You know, you have unpredictable rain, you have storms, you have cyclones in areas that didn't have any. Now, these ecological shifts are impacting these biomes, and these are important focuses for human habitation. So what you don't realize is, again, that, you know, water impacts the crops you grow and the groundwater impacts it directly, and uh, the material of crops that you get eventually goes on the table, so your food habits, your culture, the building materials that are available are all connected with this ideological mapping. Moreover, in India, agriculture, culture, built, and natural history remains in relationship to the different geographies that make up this subcontinent. So how do we then focus on ecology and climate change to support the SDG 2030? So even if the scientists knew how climate change will manifest itself, traditional knowledge and practices have to be included and accounted for and integrated into these responses. Can we get a deeper understanding of climate change by analyzing it through a transdisciplinary approach? Scientists, architects, cultural practitioners, uh, you know, automotive designers. It has to all come together in a cohesive action. And are we as a society supporting cultural practitioners from different fields to respond to climate change and to sustainability issues? Can art and aesthetics, do you think art and aesthetics is a serious contributor and can cause a process of change through sustain, to, towards sustainable societies? And is this change possible without a cultural change? So, as per UNESCO's book on culture and, you know, the 2030 indicators, culture contributes both as a sector of activity in itself and as an intrinsic component present in other sectors. While safeguarding and promotion of culture represents an end in itself, it also con contributes transferly to many of the SDGs, including those on sustainable cities, decent work, economic growth, gender inclusions, reducing inequalities, the environment, 
you know, peaceful and inclusive societies, the role of culture can be addressed both as a driver that contributes directly to bringing about an economic change and providing the social benefits. So it's very, very important for policy enactments at the national, state, and district level, along with private, uh, you know, the PPP models, as they're called, the public-private partnership models, to impact how culture is perceived amongst a growing generation of youth and also, you know, the deep cultural connections that we have that provide for a sustainable lifestyle. So, uh, the picture that you can see is about, uh, you know, uh, a theatrical performance that was done on the banks of a perennial river in Bulentia as part of the Bulentia Legacy Festival that discusses uh, uh, you know, a human interaction to the rivers. And these boys are doing simple rituals too to display to a larger citizen group as to how water impacts our lives on an everyday. This particular image is again another cultural practitioner. She's a printmaker called Motushi Chakrabarti from Kolkata. And she has explored, this is part of something that we did in called the Jaipur Kala 2017, it was on water. And her response to that was using the Kagzi printmakers, which are the indigenous print, uh, uh, printmakers of uh, Jaipur. And as a contemporary art collaboration, she produced this large 13 feet uh, uh, installation and art installation. It's called the River Chronicles. And it talks about the turgidity of water and how we are all dirtying our water. This particular image is on, uh, made by Dr. Palasen Gupta, who's a dean of the Rabindra uh, Bharti College in uh, Kolkata, and she's a printmaker and a curator of repute. Her work is in response to uh, Rajasthan's use, judicial use of crafts, which is the Bagru printmakers who, you know, who cut out these uh, woodcuts, and and there is a process of uh, printmaking with the Dabu prints, and she discusses how uh, the Marwadis migrated from Shikhavati Havelis in Rajasthan to Kolkata. So Rajasthan is a dry biome, and Kolkata was a port of trade because there was a water trade with England. And this whole community actually uh, migrated to Kolkata, and her work you know, sort of refers to that. This particular one is called Setu. What is the importance of a drop? in our lives, a water drop in our lives. And uh, it was cut out of Kota stone that is easily available in Rajasthan. Moving on from there, I'm bringing you to the effect of post-cyclone Fanny, how were cultural communities affected? You know, Odessa progressively has become extremely vulnerable to climatic changes, and the cyclones have become more and more frequent in the Bay of Bengal. And uh, post-cyclone Fanny, there was, an, uh, you know, there was a whole community of cultural practitioners uh, from a village called Ragurajpur that feeds into the... It's a Patachitra community. I don't know whether you're fa you know, familiar with this uh, craft. Uh, it's um, called the Nakashi art, and it's one of the oldest practices in India, traditional practices. This whole community lost all their work uh, due to the cyclone. And so, you know, contemporary artists in Gurgaon, and uh, we all got together and supported uh, a, a digni dignified uh, sort of earning for them. So we brought them to the city and we sold a work for 200 families that they could take the money back in a crisis format. So most of the time, these are, these are your invisible communities that are not seen, but they decorate your walls. Uh, and this is one of the news pieces called The Remains of the Day, which discusses this. It was posted in the Indian Express. So to finally conclude, Cultural practitioners have the ability to influence the sense of communities via multitude art forms that can have a lasting impact and bring about a sustainable change. Thank you.